Okay, so even those that only know a little bit of algebra should be able to solve this equation given this information. Now the problem is 11 minus 6x is equal to 3, and we're trying to solve for the variable x. But uh, we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 0, B is negative 1.2, C is 0.53, and D is 1.16. Now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, we have this lovely algebra equation and we're trying to solve for x. So we have 11 minus 6x is equal to three. And as I indicated, you don't really need to know a lot of algebra to get the right answer. So hopefully uh, a lot of you out there know what I'm talking about. If you don't, stick with me for a minute or two. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer here is D, approximately 1.16. So that's what X is equal to, approximately 1.16. So if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your knowledge of solving basic algebra equations. Now this particular equation actually uh, is not all that basic. So I'm gonna have to kind of take that back here for a second. But given this information, okay, well then anyone with basic algebra skills should be able to get the right answer. So if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm still confused. Well, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so one big, huge thing, okay, especially for those of you that uh, still have to take math uh, tests, if you have an algebra equation and a multiple choice um, question, you absolutely should never get uh, these problems wrong because what you can do is simply check each solution, okay, until you find the correct solution. Now here, again, I did say you can use your calculator. If you know a basic algebra, in other words, you know how to evaluate numbers, you can plug in this 1.16 right here. So you would have 11 minus six to the 1.16. Now you have to know how to use your calculator, obviously, but when you take six to the 1.16 uh, power, you should get approximately something like 7.999, pretty close to eight. So you're gonna have 11 minus something pretty close to eight, and then of course that is going to be equal to three. All right, so this is again a major tip for those of you that still have to take test. If you have a multiple choice question, okay, or a math question, or an algebra question, and you have an equation, you can always uh, get these right by checking your answers, right? So if we checked, for example, A is zero, okay, so if X is equal to zero, well then what are we going to have? We're gonna have 11 minus six to the zero power. Is this equal to three? Well, anything to the zero power is one. So this is gonna be 11 minus one. That is not equal to three. All right, so hopefully a lot of you out there are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's exactly what I did, and that is fantastic. But let's suppose for a second that we did not have a multiple choice question here. Well, in this circumstance, you're simply just gonna to have to know the math, and you might be like, all right, well, what's going on here? Well, this particular equation is not all that simple. It seems pretty simple, but uh, really, we have the variable in the exponent location, right? So this is what we call an exponential equation. This is much more interesting than, let's say, six to the x is equal to 18. Now notice the variable x here is not in the exponent location. So for example, if we have two to the third power, three up here is the exponent, right? It's the little number in the top right, or it can be a variable. And then this big number down here is the base. The entire thing is a power. So anytime you're solving an equation where you're looking for the variable that's in the exponent location, well, these type of equations get much more interesting. It's not the same as something like six times X is equal to 18. This is uh, just basically you're multiplying 
uh, 6 times times some unknown value x, and that's equal to 18. Of course, to solve this equation, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 6, so x is equal to 3. Well, these type of equations right here are much more interesting, but one thing you could do if you understand that this is an exponential equation, and let's just go ahead and just get rid of these answers here for a second. What if I gave you this uh, question right here? 3x is equal to 11. 3x is equal to 11. Well, you can kind of use some common sense to figure out what x should be pretty close to. Now here, again, this is a very simple example of an exponential equation. So we can be like, well, let's see what happens when x is equal to 1. So that would be 3 to the first. That is 3. Well, that's not going to be enough because we're looking for 3 to some power is equal to 11. Well, what happens if we make uh, x 2? Well, we're going to have 3 squared, but 3 squared is 3 times 3 or 9. Well, we're getting pretty close to 11. Uh, we have 3 squared, that's 9. We want 11, so let's go up another power. So x is equal to 3. Well, we have 3 cubed, but that's 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. All right, so this is way too far. We're looking for 3 to some power is equal to 11. So just by looking at uh, the pattern here, we got 1, 2, and 3. We know our answer should be pretty close to 2. So you could kind of use some trial and error here. So in other words, you might want to go like 3 to the 2.1 or 3 to the 2.2 and just kind of uh, keep testing, kind of keep uh, testing numbers until you get something that's pretty close to uh, that exponent that gets you pretty close to 11. All right, so this is kind of one approach. But the problem with that approach is you're not going to get the total exact answer. So again, we're going to just simply have to know the mathematics here. But um, as I indicated, we are dealing with an exponential equation. And uh, these type of equations generally you learn how to solve in courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, and, uh, generally second year algebra. So if you haven't taken second year algebra, well, you simply may never have learned how to solve these type of equations, but uh, this is not going to be that difficult. Matter of fact, it's going to involve this button on your calculator. So if you ever wondered what that LOG button uh, is all about, well, this is what it's all about. This is what we call logarithm, or this is the log common log uh, function on our calculator, and we're going to need this um, function to solve this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And the main thing that you need to understand is that when you have an exponential equation, as we do here, we need to use logarithms. There are exceptions uh, in some type of easier problems, but in general, anytime you have an exponential equation, you need to be thinking about logarithms. This little button right here, LOG on your calculator. Uh, also, this button as well, it's LN. Okay. Now, the LN button here, just to kind of uh, clarify this, both of these are logarithm buttons. As a matter of fact, you could technically use both of these uh, buttons or functions to solve exponential equations, but you're only going to use the LN button if your base, okay, is E, the natural base E. So if I had some sort of equation like E to the X, then I want to be thinking about LN. All other values, you're going to go ahead and use the common log button. All right, so this is what we call log base 10. And uh, this is a huge topic. I really don't want to try to, you know, make this video any longer than it needs to be. So if you're not familiar with logarithms, what they are, check out, uh, I have a matter of fact, I have a ton of additional videos on logarithms on my YouTube channel. And I'll give you some uh, additional information where you can learn all this stuff. But what we need to do here is just simply use the log function to solve this basic equation. And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is kind of isolate the power part of the equation. So we want to get 6x all by itself on one side, and then we want to get one number on the other side. So over here, we have 11 minus 6x is equal to 3. Again, we want to kind of isolate the 6x on one side and get one number on the other side. So what we need to do here is subtract 11 from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, and we kind of add down in a column manner, we're going to end up with negative 6x is equal to negative 8. All right, so we're pretty close here uh, to using uh, the logarithm function. But we have these negatives right here, and let's go ahead and get rid of those uh, negative signs by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 1. All right, so when we do that, 
uh, we, when we divide both sides of the equation by negative 1, we end up with 6x is equal to 8. Okay, so this is where we want to be to use logarithms. This is very much like 3 to the x is equal to 11. At this point, when you have a simple exponential equation where you only have a power and a number on both sides of the equation, then we can use logarithms. Now, how do we use logarithms to solve an exponential equation? Well, what we're going to do is actually take the log of both sides. Now, I'm writing it right here, and a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I still don't understand what this is all about. Well, just stick with me for one second. We're going to take the log of both sides, and then we're going to have to use a property of logarithms to solve for x. This is not going to be that difficult. But if you do have your calculator out, just take that um, LOG button and type something in, you know, like a number, 6, or uh, it depends on what type of calculator you have, but typically you can hit the LOG button and put a number in there like 6 or, you know, 8, doesn't make a difference, and hit enter, you're going to see that you're going to end up with some sort of decimal value. So this right here, log of 8, okay, this is what we call the common log, it's uh, log base 10, this is just some sort of value, some sort of decimal value. Now you don't want to go into your calculator and turn this into a decimal just yet. But I just want to kind of uh, tell you that this stuff isn't all that scary. Now, I am kind of uh, skipping over a few things here in terms of what a logarithm is and its relationship to exponential functions. This is stuff that you absolutely need to know. And I'm going to give you some specific advice in just one second as we continue to solve for x. But uh, let's go ahead and take this step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow on YouTube. I've been uh, pretty fortunate over the years, you know, uh, just posting videos on YouTube. I lo love teaching math. You see, as a math teacher, to me, I'm happiest when I'm teaching people. And the more people I can help, well, the happier I am. But, uh, you know, I need your help, okay? And the best way to help me uh, really reach other people so I can help them is to hit that subscribe button. That really does count uh, for YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, if you want to know more about logarithms, and this is an absolute critical uh, topic, especially if you want to understand algebra, let me give you a couple uh, suggestions. So one, I have a ton of content on my YouTube channel. Matter of fact, I have well over 3,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math. So you can go into those videos and um, you know watch and learn a lot about logarithms. But they're really uh, my best work is going to be in my full main math courses. You can find uh, the links to those in the description of this video. And I'm going to suggest two courses uh, for those of you out there um, that really want to learn this. The first is my Algebra 2 course. And then if you're kind of beyond that, you might want to check out like my pre-calculus course. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the solution here. So we're going to take the log of both sides. Now, this is where the, kind of the magic happens. So when we take the log of both sides, we have uh, something called a property of logarithms. So we're focusing on this x. We want to solve for x, but this x is up here floating in the exponent uh, uh, spot or location of this power. But when I take the log of a power, like the log of 6x, I can also write this this way. I can drop this x in front of the log. And the reason why I could do that is something called a property of logarithms. So there's different properties of logarithms that you're, need, or you're going to need to understand if you truly want to understand this. But you can see this is not too complex, right? If I, so if I have log 6x, well, I could also write this as x log 6. And this is awesome because this is x times log 6. Now remember, this is nothing but a decimal, some sort of number. And this is a number as well. So really what you have here is a super basic algebra equation, something like x to uh, x times, let's just make up a number, 2 is equal to another number, maybe like 10. So x times 2 is equal to 10. Well, really, we would want to look at it uh, this way. 2x is equal to 10. This is a basic algebra equation. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2 or the number in front of the x. And that's all we have to do here to solve for x. So you don't want to do anything with your calculator just yet. You kind of, um, you know, as um, uh, best practices, if you will, uh, you do that at the very end. All right, so to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by log 6, right? Because I want to get x all by itself. 
So now here I have x is equal to log 8 divided by log 6. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and break out our calculator. And when we do our calculations here, you're going to see that x is approximately equal to 1.16. And you can check this, right? So kind of going back to uh, the original multiple choice question up here, if you know how to check solutions. And matter of fact, here again, even if you didn't know uh, the algebra, or you didn't understand logarithms, if you didn't know how to plug in a number in a variable and uh, take a power. Matter of fact, let's talk about this real quick before I wrap up this video. Some of you might be saying, MSD2 Math Man, how do you exactly do this in your calculator? Well, here is how you do this, right? So if I wanted to find 6 to the 1.16 power, depending on your calculator, you're going to have some sort of function like this. So it's going to be, you're going to obviously type in 6, and then you're looking for one of these keys. Uh, typically, it's going to be an upside down V that's called a caret, or something like a Y to the X, or an X to the Y, something like that. These are going to be the three most common functions. Probably this is going to be the number one most common function if you're working with a scientific calculator. So you're going to hit 6, you're going to hit this function, and then you're going to want to use parentheses, okay? and type in that uh, exponent. So that would be 1.16 and parentheses, and then hit enter, and you should come up with something pretty close to 7.9999, which is pretty close to eight. So 11 minus eight is three. All right, so hopefully you got something out of this video, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.